Hello everyone, it's Umzara's Calm. Welcome back to part five. We're gonna work on our borders and binding. So as you can see, the quilt is finished. It still needs some cleaning up and washing. And what you see are the borders. I'm trying to show you the borders that I ran into a lot of problems with. I decided to do the top borders and then the sides. So first thing we have to do is start with our lemon peel crumb blocks. So we have to go back to the drawing board and I had to make more of the lemon peel crumbs the blocks that we have and you can see me here at my sewing machine playing with my luscious crumbs now I've ironed everything out and I'm cutting the lemon peel blocks we're gonna place these on our borders we have two longer side borders for the sides of your quilt and two uh, shorter ones for the top and the bottom of the quilt so Believe me, I had to make more of the lemon peel crumb blocks, okay? And we needed more leaves. Remember how we sewed scraps and, and um, of fabric together and we made our leaves. I'm not going to go through this with you again, but I used different colors of green here are our leaves I did make some types of vines but I decided not to use those and I have everything is here ready for the um, blind hem stitching here are our lemon peel blocks and our leaves the next thing we have to do is make your vines this is a bias piece of fabric I folded in half to make the vines now I've laid everything out on the border this is the top border if you start with the top border you must do both the top and the bottom borders you cannot do a top and a side you can do a side and a side but you have to do either the sides together or the tops together okay and here I've pinned everything down. I may have glued some of the lemon peels down with the Elmer's glue. You can see my leaves, my vines, and my lemon peels. Oh my God. If I could just tell you guys. It was very challenging to sew this long strip oh, of a material. I'm showing you in this video that I'm using Elmer's glue and it's in a little tube so convenient that's what you see is the glue that is stuck to the quilt I had to shift all the lemon pills over because I was sort of not on the right point and I am right now sewing on a leaf blind hem stitch 5.0 stitch width and I believe it is a one point four um, stitch I forget how to say that stitch well stitch width and a stitch length yes the stitch length is a 1.4 1.5 I wanted it to be close because these little critters these little crumbs of, um, of leaves and, and lemon peels they are going to take a lot of stress you do not want this to come apart in the wash with handling you want to make sure that your stitches and your leaves and your lemon peels and your vines stay on the quilt you don't want to have a chance of anything coming off so your stitch length can be 1.4 1.5 but make it small so that it will stay through the test of time so here I am this see how long this is I believe this is a side 
of the quilt and not a top and it was very long and I had to keep rolling up the 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 um that section of the quilt the border to sew on each lemon peel each leaf each vine and it was challenging and I wanted to give up and I wanted to just have it to be over but I persisted and I kept going forward um, I apologize for the lighting hey just keep moving just do the best you can that's what I was thinking and as you can see me pulling it out I'm stopping along cutting the threads making sure it's cleaned up and if you can tell through my pictures you can see that I did not clean up my threads I did not pick out my basting stitches I was so happy to get it done I just took pictures not professional I'm not a professional I am a normal regular person living in this world trying to be creative so if you see string in the pictures if you see something that looks like glue it is and it's okay because um, once it gets really finished and I have time to sit and pick around and wash the quilt it will look nicer and I will take better pictures but for right now just to get the video done you're going to see a lot of strings and glue and so forth and such but I'm happy that I'm done still have to do the label but we're getting it done so here I am I got stuck a lot of times with the pins it hurt very bad along my stomach this this section of the quilt had to be it would fall down in my lap and I don't know why I didn't stop to glue this down I I believe it would have been better to put the Elmer's glue iron it down but um, sometimes you get sort of impatient um, as a quilter and I just wanted to that night I said I want to at least get this panel done with the um, quilting and the you know the stitching everything down all those pins they gave me a lot of trouble so you can see here I am about to stitch down uh, the vines remember how we made the vines this is material that would have been thrown away so yeah the vines are being stitched down remember I have a large stitch width and a small stitch length which is the length is about a 1.4 1.6 to a 1.5 I want why do I want it small because I had had so many problems with things peeking and stitches slipping out and falling apart so I did not want this to happen on this quilt I want this quilt to be very durable especially it being a crumb quilt you have a lot of edges and fraying and little pieces and so you need to small make your stitch length smaller now this is a blind this is not a this is a blind hem stitch and I made that longer because I wanted it to really grab into the material now here is a video of the top border both the top and the bottom border are are on stitch on my quilt yes I got that far and here's another video I put it it's outdoor I thought the lighting would be better but oh isn't it cute aren't the leaves everything has a special character now why did I come back to this section this is the quilt as you go now why am I using such a small section because imagine you're doing this you're sewing on your borders with this big bulky quilt over to the left side of you I did not have the, a way of recording that 
so I decided to do a small sample to show you it's not fair is it because you would have loved to see me struggle with the quilt on to the left as I'm sewing the quilt to the borders oh my goodness you wouldn't have wanted to see me it was very challenging I'm not gonna say it was difficult because I, I promised myself I wouldn't say that it was very challenging but we got it done and I glued just like you see I decided to make sure that see how nice and neatly you see my pins very bad lightning I'm sorry and you can see there's a bulk of quilt to the left of me you can't see but it is because I have both borders both top and bottom borders ha I did it so now you think the work is easy but we're working on our binding and it gets even harder because now you're working on the binding and you have the whole quilt plus the borders the tops everything this is the pattern that I decide to use this is um, June Taylor's uh, what is it called it is a um, ruler and I'm trying you can see me trying to cut in there my my blade is dull I'm just really head on to get finished with this so here's another small representation of what I did I had a big quilt but this is just a small sample of excuse me of sewing on a border I think that this is not very fair for beginning quilters to see me do this we need to have someone show actually how you're sewing a real large quilt with the border I had little room my light was going away so I decided to do this little section to show you and guys I just want you to know that I love this June Taylor um, this the ruler that I'm using to make the binding it has gentle curves I love it it worked out well because I had a lot of bias endings a bias on my quilt so when I I because I ran into a problem remember I had to take all the stitching out along the sides and the top it caused a lot of stretching of the borders of the um, the quilt itself so when I did attach the borders on it was sort of stretched out you can see it ruffled but you know it worked out with this binding edge of the gradual curves that it looked like it had a little ruffle in it and it looks so cute I'm sure you guys seen the intro and the pictures and the everything but I just oh I loved it I love this binding I just want to make you know that when you use the binding if you want your binding to come out very nice and crisp with no tugging and problems iron it toward the front I've never really ironed the quilt before toward the front but I did this time believe me remember this is a very big quilt this is a small section you're seeing but I had to do that to the whole large quilt I believe it could be a twin size and another thing to note when you're sewing on this binding please remember take your time and stay on your one-fourth seam allowance I didn't do that now can you imagine going back over that whole quilt where you missed staying on your one-fourth seam allowance take your time sewing on your binding so you won't have to do what I did luckily that is not the whole quilt so once you get it on you've ironed it over and it's so easily it's like butter it just it just lays along I am going to do again my favorite stitch the blind hem stitch I have a sewing machine is the Elegante 2 now when I started it 
um, to sew right here the stitch was the opposite way on my sewing machine I can do the mirror image and so I got it to take the stitch on the red binding and it worked out well again my stitch length is a 1.4 maybe smaller because I want to make sure this binding stays forever and ever and ever and ever <laughs> it'll stay but the material may um, wear out but I know that binding is on there and it looks so gorgeous where did I get the red material from well it was one of my nursing uniforms that I had I just cut it up on the bias and made bias binding tape with it I know you guys see my finger I cut my finger on a piece of glass today and I thought oh no I'm not gonna be able to sew well I put on several bandages it kept bleeding and then I wrapped it in a, a several bandages and clean well I cleaned it first and then wrapped it up and then put some tape on it to so that it can act as a pressure to stop the bleeding and I laid down for a little bit and that helped then I got back into it because I wanted to finish this quilt and get started on my next project I really apologize for the lighting but I love this gentle curve binding you guys I, I just think I want to put that on all of the quilts but it's not masculine it's more feminine but I love it I love how it just curves in and out I love the results that it that how it turned out on my quilt I know you guys have seen the intro I know if you've seen the pictures I am so happy I'm so um, satisfied with the results of how the quilt turned out so even let's think about it even the mistake of the failed mitered corner that really helped the quilt to have a little ruffle as you see when you look at the pictures again you'll see what I'm talking about so I'm cheating here with this small little sample of the quilt but this binding you're going to put this around your whole quilt look at that isn't it cute it looks like some of the polka dots just jumped off onto the red binding now I wasn't careful you see if I had a stayed and not stitched on the red it would have actually looked like you know some uh, hand stitching yes I still need to do a lot of cleaning up on the quilt you guys so bear with me I was so happy here are a lot of some of the pictures of the binding you can see how it ruffles around because of the bias but it just fits in just fine yeah it's stretched out a lot I still have basting stitches in there I still have glue from the Elmer's glue I still have strings that I need to cut but I just wanted to just take pictures and show you guys how beautiful the quilt is I do wish that I could have made it a little bit wider but I'm happy that it's done it's finished I need to do a make a label I don't believe this this quilt will hang square on a wall because it has a lot of stretching but it will look great on the bed I'm very pleased I'm happy about it I'm glad that I use my crumbs I would have thrown all these little pieces of material away I always say look what what I would have thrown away look what I would have thrown away how beautiful it was fun it was it was frustrating at times it was challenging I ran into problems every quilter does you have may have to take your seam ripper and rip out things but look if you stay with something 
if you continue to persevere and endure the trials that you come through, this is the results. I love it. It's beautiful. So it goes in the washer. It's not done, guys, because you always need to put it in the washing machine. Check to see if you have any gaps or anything that comes out or comes the stitches are coming out. So we want to check it. We want to clean it up and make it beautiful for whoever's going to get it. This is for the quilting police. I told you again, I still need to pick out basting stitches, clean up the strings and threads, wash and give it a good looking over. So just please enjoy the pictures. This is really how I felt trying to complete the quilt. I was, I was split into several, <laughs> every ant there is me, just ripping and running around, that was me. So, thank you for coming along with me on this journey of my crumb quilt, lemon peel quilt. I enjoy, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. So, we're at the end of the video. I just want to say thank you and stay tuned for more videos. This was really fun. Save your crumbs. Bye-bye.